Hi, I'm Gardner Scott. This is a great time of year in my garden because a lot of the plants are ready for some fun garden projects like these sunflower leaves and these horseradish leaves and especially these rhubarb leaves. Join me as I make garden stepping stones using my leaves. The idea behind these stepping stones is that the leaves leave behind their impression on wet concrete. So these round stepping stones all have a very distinct image of a leaf that will be permanent. I had lots of different leaves for my stepping stones to give me variety, but I could just as easily make all the stones from the same leaves. For this project, I'll be using three inch rings that I cut from a longer tube, the kind of tube that's used to form concrete footers. These 12 inch wide form tubes come four feet long and you can find them at home improvement big box stores. I like to cut them down into smaller sizes just to make them much more manageable. And then I'll mark a ring all the way around the tube at three inch intervals. And then it's time just to cut the rings from the tubes at the line. You can do it with a handsaw. This works, but I don't think it's the most effective way. So I prefer power tools. For me, a jigsaw works best. It's easy to control, it's fast, you can make sure that you're cutting only on the line, and it's my preferred tool of choice. What you're left with is a 12 inch wide, 3 inch tall ring that's perfect for stepping stones. I've already cut some of the leaves from the horseradish, the sunflower, and the rhubarb. The next step will be to put these on a sheet of plastic, and I've got this plastic on top of a piece of plywood, and these nice thick veins will act as the form for making the stepping stone. So I'll just lay my choice of leaves on this plastic and then I'll surround it with one of these three inch rings. You place the leaves with the vein side up and how you arrange the leaves is completely up to your own artistic ability but realize that it's this backside that will form the impression on the concrete. So it will look like leaves, and in this case, with the horseradish leaves, they are overlapping, and that's the image that will remain. I typically will lay out the leaves in a basic design that I think I'll like, and then place the ring on top of it. From there, I can adjust the leaves inside the tube. And so I'll move them around and then finally come up with a design that I like. And this looks good. I think this will be good for this stone. With the leaves and the rings all ready to go, now it's time to mix up the concrete. And I'm just using a 60 pound bag of concrete mix. This should make enough concrete for three of the stepping stones. I'm using my wheelbarrow 
and using the recommendations on the bag, I will start adding water and then mix up the concrete mix. I'll keep mixing it, adding a little bit of water if I think it needs it. What I'm looking for is a consistency kind of like wet oatmeal. It needs to be a little runnier than concrete is usually mixed to because it needs to be liquid enough to form into the tubes and take on the texture of the leaves. And now, using an old garden trowel, I'll begin to just scoop the concrete into the forms. Now, I am wearing eye protection because you don't want this to splatter into your eyes. So, with gloves and with eye protection, I'll just start scooping the concrete into all three of these molds. Now you can just shovel the concrete mix in, but particularly when I'm trying to get a very specific look and design with the leaves, I'll place the concrete so that it doesn't disturb the leaves. I've done this with the other two. This is the third one. And this initial layer is just an inch, maybe two inches thick. But the point of this is just to get that initial portion on the leaves and ensuring that they're not broken up or shifted as you're placing the concrete. And now with all of the concrete in the ring for this initial phase, I'll tap it up and down, try to loosen up any air bubbles, and also to help ensure that this wet concrete has very good contact with the leaves on the bottom. This beading with the trowel actually helps make the concrete more elastic and it forms better all the way around so that you won't have any holes in the concrete and it should form pretty well and so now at this point i'll take the rest of the concrete mix and add it to the three forms to increase the thickness I'll finish blending that top layer of the last of the concrete. And for good measure, I'll tap the sides. This will help loosen up any other air bubbles that might be hiding. Now remember, this is the bottom of the stepping stone. It's going to be turned upside down. So if you want to carve your initials into the wet concrete, Give it 10 or 15 minutes to start setting up and you'll be able to write whatever you want on the wet concrete. It'll be permanent as well. 
The next step of the process is to cover the molds with a sheet of plastic. And then I'll weight it down so that it doesn't blow away. It's best to do this project on a cloudy day because as soon as the sun is out, the concrete starts to dry. I started and it was cloudy and my sun is starting to come out now. So I finished just in time. This plastic will help retain some of the moisture in the concrete. So even if the sun does come out, the concrete will stay wet. And we want that. We want the concrete to cure slowly so that it's moist during the entire process. If it dries too quickly, it can crack and weaken, and you don't want that for a stepping stone. Periodically over the next couple days, I'll come out with a spray bottle, lift the plastic, and spray the top of the concrete so it stays a little wet. And then in about three days, I'll come back and we'll be ready to remove the concrete form at that time. So the stepping stones have been curing for about four days, actually, and now it's time for the unveiling. All you do is just pick it up and turn it over. You'll see that the leaf is still wet because the wet concrete has kept it moist during the entire curing process. And what we'll want to do is to gently start peeling back the leaf. And what's left behind are all the veins of the leaf that have now imprinted on the concrete. I don't need to remove all of the leaf pieces at this point but I'm trying to remove as much as I can. So I'll use a screw or a nail to gently probe into some of these areas where the veins are sticking a little bit more. I don't want to scratch the concrete if I can avoid it. I'm just trying to remove the sections of the leaf. The next stage is actually to let this dry in the sun for a few days. As these leaf sections that are left behind dry, they'll shrink and that'll help make it easier to brush off. And I'll continue this process with the other two stepping stones, turning them over and then removing the leaf sections allowing whatever pieces that remain a few days to dry in the sun. The easy parts are removed, and now I've just set the stones out in the sun. After just a few days of sitting in the sun, the bits of leaf that still remain are much easier to pull out. In fact, you might be able to actually pull out the entire remaining sections. So that's what I'll do with all of these stepping stones, is just to continue to remove all these bits of dried leaf that are still stuck in. Most of them will come out pretty easily, but for some of these that have deeper veins, you might have to get in with a tool of some type. I just usually use a, a screw or a nail or a toothpick just to dig out 
some of those veins that like to stay behind. But it doesn't take long to clean up these stones very well. With all the leaf fragments off of the concrete, now it's time to remove the cardboard ring. I went ahead and poured water on all the stones and just gave it a couple minutes for the water to soak in and soak this cardboard ring. And then I just take a blade and score the side of the ring. And now the whole thing will come off in one piece. And with the cardboard removed, the stepping stones are ready to go anywhere in your garden. Now, they are pretty heavy. Each one weighs about 20 pounds. They're likely to stay put wherever you place them. And they're going to hold up to a lot of foot traffic. I especially like also that each one is unique, bearing the imprint of the leaf or leaves that I selected. If you like this natural gray concrete color, the project is done. I like a little color in my stones, however. You may remember at the beginning of the video that the stepping stones I highlighted had a lightish red color. That's because I added a terracotta concrete color to the mix when I mixed up that concrete. And it came out with that reddish terracotta color. I'm going to do something different with these. I'll save that for another video. But I will definitely add some color, personalize it one step more, and add these to the other stepping stones in my garden. There you have it. How I make stepping stones using leaves. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know below. If you haven't subscribed to the Gardener Scott channel, you can do so now. If you like the video, you can give me a thumbs up and share it. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>